हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर लुबना सिद्दीकी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया न्यू डेली टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल रॉक्स टाइप्स एंड फॉर्मेशन प्रोसेस विच कम्स अंडर द पेपर जियो मोर्फोलॉजी इंट्रोडक्शन द अर्थ क्रस्ट इज मेड ऑफ रॉक्स विच मे बी हार्ड और सॉफ्ट and may have varied colors the word rock has different meaning to different people for example for an engineer the rock is a material which can be blasted to make dams roads and so on a builder equates it with a hard resistant building material similarly a layman can imagine rocks as the pebbles on beach however geologists define a rock as a collection of mineral grains according to alam and mohammed 2008 in the present module i am going to discuss about the following aspects of rocks number 1 igneous rocks number 2 sedimentary rocks number 3 metamorphic rocks and lastly the rock cycle on the basis of mode of formation rocks may be grouped into the three families that is number a igneous rocks b sedimentary rocks and c metamorphic rocks let us discuss each one in detail a igneous rocks the term igneous is derived from the latin word ignis means fire Igneous rocks are formed through cooling, solidification and crystallization of molten material that is magma. They are sometimes called as primary rocks. These rocks were organized first of all the rocks at the time of origin of earth and especially during the formation of lithosphere. In other words, igneous rocks represent the rocks from which all other rocks directly or indirectly have been derived that is why these rocks are also called as parent rocks igneous rocks are characterized as the hardest rock as resistant to weathering fine to coarse grain texture with absence of fossils and no strata like sedimentary rocks now classification of igneous rocks number 1 classification on the basis of mode of occurrence igneous rocks can be divided into groups depending upon the conditions under which they solidify one group is termed as extrusive rocks and another one is intrusive rocks these groups of igneous rocks are discussed as follows extrusive rocks extrusive rocks are those rocks which have ejected from a volcano or some other vent and are accumulated and solidified on the surface of the earth these rocks may be further subdivided into two parts on the basis of the way of eruption figure 1 shows the mode of occurrence of igneous rocks number 1 is explosive type explosive type of volcanic eruption ejects accumulated gases and lavas which are thrown violently violently into the air volcanic materials include bombs which are big fragmented rocks those about the size of a walnut are lapilli and very fine materials are called ash or volcanic dust fine volcanic materials when deposited in aquatic condition are called tuffs breccia or agglomerates are formed after deposition of coarse and fine materials number 2 quiet type the molten materials come out through minor cracks on the earth surface which is called lava flows it may happen that the successive flows give rise to layers of lavas after being piled one on another these lavas after being cooled and solidified from form basaltic igneous rocks such kind of 
flood basalts is formed by several episodes of lava flow during fissure flow of volcanic eruption that further forms lava plateaus and lava plains. Second is intrusive rocks. The rising magma solidifies below the earth's surface during a volcanic activity and remains surrounded by older pre-existing rocks is called intrusive rocks. They further subdivided into major groups on the basis of depth and place of cooling. Number one, plutonic igneous rocks. They are formed due to cooling of magmas at deep inside the earth where surrounding rocks totally covers the hot magma and consequently slow down the rate of cooling. Due to the situation at the greater depth, magma may require many thousands of years for complete cooling and the mineral crystals in the rocks can grow to, rel to relatively larger size that can be seen with naked eye. Number 2. Hyperbasal igneous rocks. When the rising magmas are come just below the surface of the earth from the interior with the cracks, pores, crevices and hollow places during the volcanic eruption, the resultant cooled and solidified rocks are known as hyperbasal igneous rocks or volcanic rocks. The mineral crystals in volcanic rocks are so small as to be invisible without microscopic inspection. Black or dark grey coloured and fine grained basalt rock is the, is the suitable rocks examples of hyperbasal igneous rocks. There are some important forms of these rocks according to the solidification depending on hollow places such as batholiths, lacoliths, facoliths, ifoliths, cells, dikes, necks, etc. For detail, we can also refer to module number 11, volcanoes. Figure 2 shows the intrusive igneous rocks. Now igneous rocks on the basis of mode of occurrence. N number 2, classification of igneous rocks on the basis of texture. The igneous rocks can be divided into 5 types such as number 1, glassy igneous rocks. They are characterized by general absence of grains and is produced by very fast cooling of magma on surface of the earth. Obsidians, pitch stones, pumic, peritile, etc. are the most common example. Number two, aphanitic igneous rocks. The word aphanitic has been derived from a Greek word phenares meaning thereby visible. These rocks are characterized by small grains that can be visible without a microscopic vision. Basalt, felsite and the rocks of sills and dikes are the example of this category. Number 3. Phaneritic igneous rocks. These rocks contain grains that is in enough large to see it without microscope. As the equal size and form of grains, the equigranular texture represents a uniform rate of cooling and the large size of the crystals. For example, coarse grained and plutonic igneous rocks are such as granite, diorites, etc. Re refer to figure number 4. Fourth, porphyritic igneous rocks. Porphyritic rocks contain two types of grains with different sizes. These are found in two stages of cooling. In initial stage, the rate of cooling is slow resulting in larger crystals but in the next stage the rate of cooling is faster than the earlier that forms smaller crystals. Porphyritic texture occurs in both aphanitic and phaneritic rocks for example basalt, granite, felsite, diorite etc. Fifth, pyroclastic igneous rocks. The word pyroclastic has also been derived from the Greek word clastos meaning thereby broken. These rocks are characterized by broken and fragmented rather than the interlocking or interconnected crystals. 
such type of igneous rock constitutes bomb, lapilli, breccia, volcanic dust, ashes, tufts, etc. Now, classification of igneous rocks on the basis of chemical composition. The dominant chemical present in igneous rock is silica. Igneous rocks are derived into four types on the basis of silica content such as number one, acid igneous rock. In these rocks, silica content ranges between 65 to 85 percent and average density ranges between 2.75 to 2.8. Acid igneous rocks are composed of quartz, white and pink feldspar. The most predominant example of such type of rock is granite. Number two is basic igneous rocks. In these rocks, silica content ranges between 45 to 60 percent and the average density varies between 2.8 to 3.0. These rocks are heavy and dark in color because of the dominance of iron content. The significant examples are basalt, dolerite, gabbro, etc. Third is intermediate igneous rocks. Silica content in these rocks is less than the amount present in the acid igneous rocks but more than basic igneous rocks. The most dominant rocks of this group are diorite and andesite. Four, ultra basic igneous rocks. These rocks contain less than 45 percent of silica, but their average density differs from 2.8 to 3.8. That means the highest average density is found in this group of igneous rocks. Peridotite is the representative of this group of rocks. Now, some important igneous rocks and their distribution. A. Granite. The granite is a coarse grain, grain plutonic intrusive rock which is formed deep within the earth. Since the rate of cooling and solidification of magmas inside the earth is very slow because of very high temperature prevailing underground and hence granites become coarse grained. According to chemical composition, granites are acidic rocks whereas silica content ranges between 65 to 85 percent. These rocks are generally light in weight as their density varies from 2.7 to 2.8. Table 1 shows the mineral composition of granite. Now B rhyolite. It is the extrusive equivalent of granite and likewise is composed essentially of light colored silicates. This rock is fine grained and frequently contains glass fragmented and voids indicating rapid cooling in a surface environment. C. Basalt. It is a very fine grained dark extrusive igneous rock which is formed due to cooling and solidification of molten lavas at the surface of the earth. Basaltic rocks contain a high percentage of dark silicate minerals, so geologists also refer to them mafic. If basalt is having small grains rather than minute are called aphanitic basalt. Chemically, basalt contains 45 to 65 percent of silica content. Basaltic rocks are typically darker and denser than granitic rocks. Figure 4 shows some of the important igneous rocks on the basis of texture and composition. Table, show, table 2 shows the mineral composition of basalt due to cooling of lavas. Polygonal cracks are developed in basalts where it give birth peculiar uneven landforms. Many volcanic islands such as the Hawaiian Islands and the Icelands are composed mainly of basalt. D. Gabbro The coarse grained intrusive equivalent of basalt is gabbro. Although gabbro is not commonly exposed at the surface, 
it makes up a significant percentage oceanic crust. Olivine may occur in considerable amount, but biotite and horn blint are rarely present in gabbro. E andesite. It contains a mixture of both light and dark colored minerals, mainly amphibole and plagioclase. They are typically confined to continental margins. F diorite. When magma of intermediate composition are crystallized at depth, it forms the coarse grained rock called as diorite. Diorites are composed of horn blend and various feldspars. Now the second type of rocks is sedimentary rocks. The word sedimentary has been derived from Latin word sedimentum which means settling down. The word settling down indicates of solid minerals into a fluid. Most of the sediments are deposited in this fashion. According to P. G. Worcester in 1948, sedimentary rock as the word sediment implies are composed largely of fragments of older rocks and minerals that have been more or less thoroughly consolidated and arranged in layers or strata. According to the geologist, sedimentary rocks account for only 5 percent of the earth's surface or 16 kilometers or 10 miles of outer earth's surface. Each and every alluvial plain on the global earth's surface is agriculturally more prosperous than igneous and metamorphic rocks. For example, Indo-Gangetic plain in India, Nile, Nile River plain in Egypt, Mississippi Missouri plain in North America, Amazon River plain in South America, Huanghu Yangtze Kiang plain in China, Rhine River Valley in Europe, Murray Darling Valley in Australia, etc. Many sedimentary rocks are also economically important. Coal is burned to generate and provide energy. Other major sources, other major resources like petroleum and natural gas are found in pores within sedimentary rocks. Iron, aluminum and manganese are used in construction while fertilizers are used in agriculture. It contains fossils which can be used as vital evidence in the study of past. Sedimentary rocks contain most of the earth's groundwater which are very essential for life sustenance. Now classification of sedimentary rocks. Number one, on the basis of the nature of sediments. Number one, mechanically formed or clastic rocks. The rocks of the lithosphere are decomposed and broken up by mechanical agents like water, wind, glaciers, etc. Fragments of many different kinds of rocks and minerals accumulate on the earth's surface in the form of soils, dust and coarser fragments with variable size and shape. These fragments are classified into five different rocks with respect to their size, shape and contents. Number 1. Sandstone. Sandstones are formed mostly due to deposition, deposition, cementation and consolidation of sand grains. These rocks are composed of quartz grains. On the basis of their size, they can be divided into following categories. Table 1 shows the classification of sands by grain size. Number 2 is conglomerates. These rocks are also composed of coarser sand grains with pebbles and boulders of varying sizes. The term conglomerate is applied to cemented fragmental rocks containing rounded fragments such as pebbles and boulders. If the fragments are angular in shape, the rock is called brachia. When the rounded fragmented materials are cemented by quartz, the resultant rocks become conglomerates. Number 3. Clay rock. Clay rocks are formed due to the deposition and cementation of sediments. These rocks are composed of fine grains 
with the size of 0.03 mm to 0.004 mm and are called silts whereas clays are formed with the, when the sediments of the grain size of 0.004 mm to 0.00012 mm are cemented and consolidated. Both the rocks are impervious but they are soft. Clays are composed of almost entirely of choline. 4. Shale Shales are formed of lamini, lamini which are easily separated. These rocks are impure clays which contain a considerable proportion of minerals other than cholinite. Fifth is loess. It is very fine grain materials which are deposited by wind on the land. These rocks are very, very poorly stratified that means there is an absence of layers. The color varies from light brown to dull yellow. A peculiar property of loess is its ability to stand vertical cliffs. Loess is generally poorly consolidated are very prone to erosion due to its finely divided condition and to the remarkable wealth of soluble mineral plant foods which it contains loess soils are very fertile. Figure 5 shows the representation of different mechanically formed or clastic sedimentary rocks. Now second is chemically formed sedimentary rocks. Chemical materials are contained by running water. When such chemical active water comes in contact with the continental rocks, soluble materials are removed from the rocks. These materials are called chemically formed sediments. For example, gypsum and salt rock. Figure 6 shows the representation of different chemically formed or non clastic sedimentary rocks. Third is organically formed sedimentary rocks. These rocks are formed due to disintegration and decomposition of sediments by both animals and plants. These sediments, after being deposited and consolidated, form organic sedimentary rocks. On the basis of lime and carbon content, these rocks are divided into three categories. Number one, calcareous rocks. These rocks are formed by sediments which are derived from the skeletons and remains of those animals and plants containing large portion of lime. For example, limestone, limestone and chalk. Figure 7 shows the types of calcareous rocks while figure 8 shows white chalk Cliff East Sussex, England. Second is carbonaceous rocks. Unlike other sedimentary rocks groups, these are direct vegetation origin. These rocks are formed due to transformation of vegetation because of their burial during Earth's movement and consequent weight and pressure of overlying deposits. Finally, this results in different grades of coals. For example, peat, lignite, bituminous and anthracite. Figure 9 shows the different grades of coal in successive stages of coal formation. Coals are also found in stratified layers wherein coal layers are known as coal seams. Carbonaceous rocks are more important economically than geographically. Figure 10 shows the coal formation and its depth of occurrence. Third is siliceous rocks. These rocks are formed due to dominance of silica content. Diatomaceous or infusorial earth is a loose in structure and white or gray or brown in color. Siliceous rocks are formed due to aggregation and compaction waste derived from sponge radiolarian organisms and diatom plants. Geyserite is the best example of this groups of rock. Figure 11 shows types of geyserite rocks. Now second, classification of sedimentary rocks on the basis of transporting agents. Number one, argillaceous rocks. These rocks are also called as aqueous rocks due to their formation in water. 
Aqueous rocks become argillaceous because of dominance of clay in the rocks. These rocks are characterized by softness and imperviousness. It is further subdivided into three subdivisions that is marine agrilaceous sedimentary rocks and lacustrine ag agillaceous sedimentary rocks and riverine agillaceous sedimentary rocks. Second is aeolian sedimentary rocks. These rocks are the result of deposition of sands which are brought down by the wind. They are formed with the absence of layers. Lewis is the most important example. A. Lewis. It is formed due to the accumulation of fine materials of sands. In these rocks, water can easily percolate due to porousness. The most important characteristic of Lewistic rock is that the entire mass may stand like a vertical cliff or wall. The most extensive Lewistic deposits are found in North China where the Yellow River that is Huanghu and its tributaries are the representatives of Lewis, Lewisic rocks. In India, the best example of Lewisic rock is found on both the banks of Paleo Channel and Valley of the Narmada River at Dhun, Dhunwadhar Falls. Behradhar near Jabalpur that is in Madhya Pradesh where the Lewisic banks rise 20 to 25 meter from the valley floor. Third is glacial rocks. Fine to coarse sediments are deposited by glaciers and thus it is called glacial rocks. These rocks are further subdivided into four subdivisions. Lateral moraines, medial moraines, ground moraines and terminal moraines. For detail, please refer to module 23, Glacial and Periglacial Landscapes. Figure 13 shows the types of glacial moraines. Now the last type of rock is the metamorphic rocks. Formation of metamorphic rocks and metamorphism. Earth is an active and dynamic planet. Rocks once are buried at the greater depth of the Earth's surface, they may be deformed and their temperature may be changed as a consequence of burial or by the intrusion of hot magmas. After such changes in the surrounding condition of rocks, the characteristics of the rocks commonly become modified with undergoing metamorphism and finally transformed into metamorphic rocks. It is sure that changes in temperature and pressure pressures are the causes of rocks in metamorphism, but they are not the only ones. Changes may be occurred as a result of changes in chemical composition. In this case, changes are most commonly associated with the movement of fluids combination like carbon dioxide and water. Metamorphism often progresses slowly from slight changes low grade metamorphism to substantial change that is high grade metamorphism. For example, under low grade metamorphism, sedimentary ro rock like shale becomes the more compact metamorphic rock slate. Now agents of metamorphism. There are some important influential factors which help rocks to be metamorphosed. The degree of metamorphism and the role of factors differ greatly from one environment to another. First factor is heat. High temperature is one of the obvious causes of rock metamorphism. It accelerates the chemical reaction that leads to the recrystallization of existing minerals and formation of new minerals. For example, limestone is recrystallized in the solid state but the rock is not melted however only the mineral or textural changes take place that results into marble. In contrary to, to this, some rocks are not stable at higher temperatures because of, con because of containing so much water and break down to form new minerals. For instance, clay is transformed into mica. Pre-existing rocks experience an elevation in temperature when they are intruded by magma coming from below is called contact or thermal metamorphism. The temperature increases with the depth of the earth's surface, so the minerals of rock start becoming unstable which further leads to recrystallization into other minerals. Second factor is pressure. Metamorphism is not purely thermal 
as pressure is another important factor in the process of metamorphism. Greater pressure in rocks consolidates mineral grains and produces a more compact rock with greater density. Bounding pressure at the greater depth may cause minerals to recrystallize into new minerals displaying more compact crystalline forms. In mountain building process, the differential stress deforms rocks. Third factor is chemical. This become active when they are in contact with water. If it is hot, water passing through rocks eat the greater depth of the surface then it is called hydrothermal solutions which dissolve some materials and deposits in some other places. Such kind of solutions acts as accelerator to promote recrystallization by enhancing iron uh, migration from one chemical to another. Chemical reaction is more advanced in hot environment where the solutions or fluid supply that is the hydroxyl ion for the creation of certain key minerals like chloride and antinolite. For example, after being contact with water, asbestos forms serpentine. Figure four, 14 shows the grades of metamorphism. Now types of metamorphic rocks. First classification is on the basis of place of occurrence. Number one, contact metamorphism. Such metamorphism happens when the mineral composition of surrounding rocks is altered due to high temperature of ascending magma. It is also known as thermal metamorphism. The best example is limestone which is altered to marble because of contact metamorphism. The area between the altered rocks and intruded magma is called aureoles. Number two, regional metamorphism. When pressure is dominant to change the forms of rock in extensive area, the process is known as regional metamorphism. This process is also known as dynamic metamorphism. Apart from pressure, temperature is also active in changing the forms of rocks. Both pressure and heat change the original form of sedimentary rock leading to folding during mountain building. Consequently, rocks are crystallized and crystallization can be further recrystallized by greater pressure and heat. Figure 15 shows the contact metamorphism and regional metamorphism. Now, second classification of metamorphic rocks on the basis of foliation or structure. Number one, foliated rocks. The term foliation comes from the Latin word leaf as the parallel leaves or pages of a book thereby characterizes as the nearby flat arrangement of minerals in a rock. Foliation may develop in both igneous and sedimentary rocks. Granite among igneous rocks can be metamorphosed in the similar foliation process to become granitic knees. Slate. It is composed of very fine grain mica flakes which are too small to be visible. Under the higher temperature, some of the clay minerals become unstable and break down to form new phyllosilicates. The most important characteristic is that it has excellent rock cleavage that can be broken down into flat, into flat slabs. Slate is produced by the low grade metamorphism of shale. Number two, example is schist. Schist are pl platy that is split into thin fl flakes or slabs very easily, while this process is called schistosity or schistose structure. Coarse grain minerals like muscovite and biotite are the composition of mica schist. Third is knees. This rock is composed of medium and coarse grain minerals in which there may be a limited or partial development of schistose structure that often give rise to a layered or lenticular structure. The most predominant minerals of, knee, of knees are felspar, quartzite, muscovite, biotite, hornblende. Figure 16 shows different types of foliated rocks. Now number two is non-foliated rocks. Unlike foliated rocks, 
non foliated rocks form under constant pressure but a minimum deformation takes place and the parent rocks are composed of mineral crystals like quartzite or calcite for example when a limestone composed of fine grained calcite is heated by the intrusion of magma the fine grains recrystallize to form larger interlocking crystals producing marble with large equidimensional grains which are actually randomly oriented examples are number 1 marble it is characterized by coarse grain crystalline rock which originates from limestone it is discussed earlier that marble is made of large interlocking calcite crystals that was in the form of a smaller size in limestone marble is useful as building stone due to its color and relative softness for example taj mahal in india and lincoln memorial in washington dc are the important exhibition of white marble second example is quartzite this rock is composed of more than 80% of quartz because the parent rock is quartz and stone the another important characteristic of this rock is that this is very hard metamorphic rock due to the high grade of metamorphism in which quartzite grains in parent rock blend the color of pure quartzite is white while iron oxide may exhibit reddish or pinkish marks and gray color is because of dark mineral because of dark minerals figure 17 shows different types of non foliated rocks now the last one is the rock cycle the cycle starts with molten materials like magma which comes from below the earth surface and reaches to it subsequently magma occasionally erupts with the help of weak surface or fracture and high pressure of interior eruption results lava after cooling and solidifying of magma this process is called crystallization and can occur both beneath the earth surface and over the earth surface the resultant rocks are called igneous rocks figure 18 shows the rock cycle these rocks begin to be eroded when they are influenced by erosional agents like water wind glacier etc and subsequently hard rocks are decomposed and disintegrated slowly the loose particles move down slope from one place to another with the help of erosional agents and deposited depressions including oceans river flood plains swamps desert basins etc sediments become sedimentary rocks under lithification process if sedimentary rocks are being involved in mountain building these rocks have to face great pressure and heat resulting metamorphic rocks the resultant rocks may face either more heat or erosional agents that can produce magma or sediments respectively and automatically the cycle can start again i hope you have understood the concept of rocks types and formation processes see you next time thank you